Hi, I'm Jake. And I'm Christine. And for the past few months, as some of you might have noticed, we've been doing a lot of reactions to the Rev Brown Spoonie Experiment reviews, particularly the ones that feature or reference Frank Stallone. And all these episodes have been a part of what I like to call Spoonie's Frank Stallone saga. And today we're going to look at the final entry in the saga. Spoonie's review and his final February review of 2014, White Ghost, starring William Cat and Red Brown. And how is this part of the Frank Stallone saga? Well, you'll see in a sec. And without further ado, you ready to get jump into this? Uh, yeah. All right. <gasps>
helicopter wreckage or seen some predator to rip off or something. Jim Harbaugh. My question is, even if you find something useful, where's he going to keep it without any pockets? Whoa, look out! Jungle gang! <laughs> yeah. Self-destruct mechanism. Well, huh? we could have used a fuse. 
shoes or a tiger or something boring. I mean, we see he has all that stuff just laying around, but the Rube Goldberg shit in the trees is just so much more fun. Wait, what is that? A bowling ball? A coconut? <laughs> if anything could have set that off. What if there was a storm and the wind knocked the tree branch? What if a fucking monkey took a shit on the pond? Fire in the hole! Wake up, Skinner! Get that the hole! Son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama chick. Well, now he doesn't look like Jesse Ventura. He looks like Patrick Stewart in a fakey mustache. While all that was going on, Shepard's girlfriend got kidnapped by the soldiers from before. So the mercenaries tracked them back to their camp. At least somebody's getting money. Someone got some head at least. Oh yeah. <laughs> this scene gets really time, confusing. Shepard goes in and just starts killing everyone. And I guess he had camouflage clothes all along, but just chose not to wear any because pants are a cruel prison imposed on us by society or something. Just ask Benzai. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my name's Benzai, and you know that I'm always Color for content creator. But the fight scene ending with him literally falling on his shovel, which severs his spine. But it's also poorly shot. We don't even know what happened for a full minute. I mean, look at this. Would you have any idea how this fight ended if I hadn't just told you? I didn't even know he had a shovel until this guy ripped it out of his back in the next scene. <laughs> he didn't know he had one either. It's just so dark. He might have fallen on his keys for all we know. And I color corrected this. It's not like I just didn't make it bright off. Fuck it. Regardless, what the fuck were they thinking with this? It just comes out of nowhere. The fight scene is going on, and then it just ends with the guy falling on his own shovel. Who comes up with this? It's not even cinematic. We couldn't have the hero, like, take the shovel and end up with it, or just have him straight up kick the bad guy's ass, like an action hero might. I just, you know, I'm trying to think of how I would have written this to where it's fitting, it makes sense, or it's foreshadowed, like, I don't know, flashback to his days in boot camp where he improperly carries the shovel. I, I, uh, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Our white ghost is making sure the bad guys don't have any children because he just got this one spade. Yeah! Oh, there he is! Ah, fucking badass. He's kick back, ain't telling no one he's going there to literally kill Cambodia. Be awesome! Elsewhere, these guys capture Sting, thinking he's the white ghost. Come on, they don't get much whiter. Sting tells her, don't stand so close to me, but it doesn't work, and they crucify him. They torture her with needles under the fingernails, which is yeah. horrible, thank you for that. Ew. And really work him over by stabbing him and blowing his kneecaps off. <laughs> oh, whatever. Rev took a blowtorch to the back and he didn't cry <laughs> like a bitch. This whole time, Shepard's doing his Rambo thing by making improvised traps along his eventual escape route from when he rescues his baby mama. But there's only so long you can listen to your woman get fucking finger-needled. And soon, mm. Shepard can take no more, and he makes his move. <laughs> Walker tries to use the chaos to have the new kid pick off Shepard from here, but the kid's a little shaky on the whole indiscriminate murder thing, and the group dynamic uh, it sort of falls apart at this point. You're a dead man! You're a dead man! <laughs> Does he need a juice box? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's sick, man, that's sick! Who goes right for the dick with a pair of scissors? She just stabbed the kid. Yeah. Oh god. That shit ain't right. Uh, hey, the guy in the bathtub is still there. That's actually really good continuity. Fuck, why can we not hit him? Wait, what? Did he, did he just run into his own trap? He just ran into his own trap! <laughs> This is a pretty lame hero. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the to with your toothbrush in the toilet. I feel like that scene should have a laugh track. God, at least nobody saw it. If they had, you can kiss that whole white ghost boogeyman mystique goodbye. If, if anybody asks, you got shot with a really big gun. God, this guy sucks. You know, damn Skippy Red Brown never got impaled on his own trap. Huh. Hey, there's Reb. Finally, we can get some killing done. You're in my way, sir. Hey, his flight was delayed, okay? You know how hard it is to get tickets to Thailand on zero notice? I would like to extremely appropriate. You ain't never gonna leave this place. He didn't have any kind of weapon to kill 
Walker with after all that? And what about the wooden spear he stabbed himself with? We know that hurts. And they're instantly dry. Bravo. And yet you kept the dead guy in the bathtub between like three scenes. Why in the hell did they even bother? It was two seconds ago. You'd think at least the actors would bring this up. Gah, whatever. You killed the red children. It happens. I do. But why? Bracken is no mad dog killer. He is after something. Shepard starts winning the fight until Jesse Ventura gets the drop off. Never leave the hero alone. to bail you out and kill this guy. The rookie mercenary decides to help him out too, because come on, who wants to work for an abusive murderer? Why do you think I left that guy with the glasses? <laughs> Channel awesome. Throw it over here. You see? Ah, my other arm! Now. Just so I keep watching to the very, very end. To the very end, to 
was always asking, where's Rep Brown? Where's Rep Brown? Where's Rep Brown? Where's Rep Brown? Who? Where's Freaks the Wolf? <laughs> Where's Freaks the Wolf? Who? Where's Freaks the Wolf? Where's Freaks the Wolf? Frank Stallone! <laughs> no, it was you, you son of a bitch! It was you all along! <laughs> the picture's alive. song. <laughs> this is him singing Far From Over. <laughs> is it Etsy shop? <laughs> and we end with character, yes. Shepard, and he's a pretty, he's a pretty incompetent, pretty, uh, lame hero. He really is. He doesn't accomplish much, and I own this movie, I've seen it, and, uh, he gets his ass handed to him more than once, and, uh, the girlfriend, I don't know how he's still the girlfriend, um, she's pretty much just there to get kidnapped and tortured, as they talk about, and the bad guy... He doesn't really come off as a real threat. He comes off more like a little kid having a temper tantrum. <laughs> like, how dare you try to stop me from killing innocent people? And he just keeps going after him. He even risks, uh, like, he has a chance to get rescued. But the bad guy, Walker, uh, he actually takes the chance to stay behind and get killed just so he can try to kill this guy. So, yeah, I get he wants to kill him, but... He's just so stupid, it, it's more infuriating than any bad deed he does. I agree entirely, uh, once Rep shows up at the end, like, it's been like 80, 90 minutes of not the worst, but not anything great, but once he comes in and starts firing, it just comes a fucking awesome show. Like, and also you notice, the hero doesn't really accomplish or succeed most of the time. No. But Rev comes in at the end, and for three minutes, he's killing everybody. Just wiping them all out. Doing his job. Yeah. 
scream and kill and yeah. fire. And rescue the supposed main character. Yes, who sucks. It's like a... I don't know, just... It was almost worth the entire build-up just to see that awesome finale of him taking over the film. And... The uh, review, I, I love this review a lot, and I remember when I started showing Spoonie reviews to Guy a few years ago, he wasn't originally into Spoonie that much, mm -hmm. but it was around this one that I think he really started to warm up to him. And I repeat something he said, um, he made fighting with a picture as believable as anybody probably could. <laughs> like, yeah, it's silly and probably even sillier when you read about it, but... He, made, he I think Noah really put in a good performance mm -hmm. for that scene. His acting when he's going through that breakdown. Thing. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, that, that was actually pretty good acting. I mean, yeah, it's always something silly, but he really looked like his heart was breaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know it's just minor, but uh, give him props for shoving his head in a toilet. Because, <laughs> yeah. My favorite... Uh, joke moment like is when he freaks out when they show the jeep and he's like wait it's his like yeah that just comes out of nowhere and his reaction was just perfect That's and true. uh it was also fun to hear the your theme kick in when william cat appeared it's a fun not not very well written but really fun song really good got a good beat to it good tempo and of course Say what you will about him as an actor, because he really never should have given acting a try, but Frank Stallone, Far From Over, it's a great song, and you can really see that he has talent in that area. And I love seeing all the, like, throughout this whole video, he kept playing clips from previous Red Brown movies, like uh, We Can't, The Press, that was from Mercenary Fighters. Mm -hmm. The Racket is no mad dog killer. I think that's from the first Captain America movie that Rev did. Also some non-Rev movies like when that bald guy falls into the spikes. Yeah. And we cut to those kids playing a Dungeons and Dragons type game. That's from this uh, other TV movie that Spoonie reviewed almost a decade ago called uh, Mazes and Monsters. This was back during that time where people thought Dungeons and Dragons was a satanic influence over kids. Mm -hmm. So there was this movie made that it has a made up version of that game, Mazes and Monsters. Mm -hmm. And it's about a bunch of kids playing it and how playing it drives one kid insane and causes him to kill people. <laughs> it's kind of a propagandic movie. And we're all off topic here, but guess who plays the serial killing uh, Mazes and Monsters player in that movie. Hmm. A very young Tom Hanks. What? Yeah. That was his, like, one of his very first roles. I'm just like, what does a young Tom Hanks look like? I feel like Tom Hanks has not aged. <laughs> he has, but he hasn't. And I can't think of much else to say. It was a really great review. It was funny throughout. Good gags and it was a little unexpected and funny when he made the joke about Channel Awesome or that guy with the glasses. Who wants to work for an abusive murderer? And uh, these days that uh, joke probably rings more true with a lot of people than most. Also, even despite that, it's cool that later on he still collaborated with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just love this a lot and we saw Benzai doing his uh, gay dance. <laughs> And any final thoughts on this uh, review? I liked Spoonie's outlook on it. Thoughts on it. Cool. Way probably more than I would like the movie. <laughs> not every Red Brown movie is a terrible watch. Um, this one's not as awesome if you're expecting full Red Brown, but it's passable in a laugh at how badly done it is way. And been quite a fun trip watching the Frank Stallone saga with you. Thank you. After all these uh, reviews, Night Claws, Last Flight to Hell, Lethal Games, and now White Ghost, got any thoughts on Frank Stallone?
What are your thoughts? I think he can sing, and obviously being the brother of Sylvester Stallone didn't hurt him, but it's clear Sly's the one who was uh, born to be an A-lister. Frank, well, he can contribute. Uh, this probably sounds mean, but he should stay just on the side. So I gotta say, it's been fun, and will we react to any more Red Brown reviews in the future? Probably, but uh, take a little break for the time being. Thanks for watching with us, and we'll see you again soon.